here on GMA, we're following the new legal setback for Donald Trump after a New York judge ruled that the former president committed years of financial fraud. We'll have the reaction. And an ABC News exclusive with the mother and the fiance of the Los Angeles Sheriff's deputy who was killed in an ambush. We'll have that and so much more right here on GMA. Ahead in the next hour of GMSA, investigators looking into whether there are more victims in the case against the local Roman Catholic priest after his arrest. Plus, as the city of San Antonio keeps growing, so does the problem of illegal dumping. We go to a neighborhood with illegal trash problems and find out what officials are doing to get that mess cleaned up. And next, custom art on wheels. KSAT takes a ride with lowrider owners whose cars are now on display at San Antonio International Airport. And checking Transguide right now. We've had a few problems this morning, but traffic is slowly starting to build as folks hit the road for this Wednesday morning. Looking live at 281 at the quarry and Interstate 37 at Carolina with the Alamo Dome in the distance. We'll be back. This morning on GMSA, Hollywood is rolling the end credits for their writer's strike. That shut down production on your favorite shows. Why writers can head back to work as they wake up this morning. Back here at home, San Antonio police are hoping you can help them track down the suspects in two separate murders. What you need to know about each case. And let's look out there with live cam this morning, starting in the 70s, so we can handle that. But yes, uh, expecting things to heat up once again. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. It's 6 o'clock on your Wednesday, September 27th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a good week so far. And, uh, you know, we hope you're powering through the heat in the afternoon. I mean, hopefully that'll, I wouldn't say wrap up soon, but uh, I, don't, I don't know, at least wind down a little bit. We're expert level now at dealing with the heat, especially in the afternoons. Justin is in for Mike and uh, yeah. happy Wednesday to you, sir. Thanks, sir. Uh, I feel like Mother Nature may be on strike. She's ah. just not budging at all. <laughs> nice way to put it. Yeah, it sure feels that way. Yesterday, there were a few showers out there. I want to show you this great picture. This is out of Divine. You can see a little bit of rain coming down there. Uh, there were some showers, especially south of San Antonio yesterday afternoon. Nice sight to see. We just didn't see a lot here in San Antonio. Most everything we saw yesterday was kind of few and far between. We have another chance today, but it's going to be like winning the rain lottery because uh, it will be only a select few that get the rain. Weather headlines. We're going to look at the time lapse here. This was yesterday evening. It was a nice sunset. And then as we went into uh, the overnight hours and then this morning, we're left with just a few clouds. So, yes, yeah, some pop up isolated downpours today. 111 days. That is how many consecutive days we've been at 90 or above. Incredible weekend. We're going to look at that forecast. Rain looks unlikely at this point. Uh, and we'll see still some hot temperatures by Saturday and Sunday. Right now we're at 77 degrees, two point is at 70. It's a warm morning. And the forecast for today takes us up to 83 at 10 o'clock by noontime, 89. This afternoon, if you if uh, you plan to be out running errands or maybe the evening commute uh, is in your plans, know that there is a 20% chance of some downpours out there. Uh, and that lasts till about 8 p.m. this evening. No rain out there right now. Roads are dry, but we still have some issues. Let's check in with Stephen for the latest on your morning commute. Yeah, uh, you right now, I think the main issue is going to be that congestion that will start building. Justin, as we get a look around town, you're not seeing a lot of it from this shot at Transguide, but we did have that crash at 35 at Somerset that we were watching very closely for about an hour. Obviously, that's cleared out, and drivers can expect can expect some quiet roadways, but getting a pretty busy start there at 35 at San Marcos, both the north and southbound lanes usually build up with traffic around this time. But we're going to keep an eye on things as the morning commute does get moving. Behind me, we did have some stalled vehicles also reported by 35 uh, right around that same spot where we had those crashes. We'll take a closer look at that and find out how that could impact your drive time. But we want to take a look at those inbound times now, especially if your destination is the Alamo City. The journey from Bernie along to I-10 eastbound should be about 22 minutes. That's not bad. And right now, 25 along 281 southbound if you're heading in from Bulverde, so no need to hurry. And 24 minutes. That's not awful coming in from New Braunfels along 35 southbound. So again, enjoy the roads while you can, because this is the hour where things really start to shape up on our roadways. More people are waking up and hitting the road, so just be careful out there. We'll have more updates for you throughout the morning. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, the Archdiocese of San Antonio is responding following a case of aggravated sexual assault against a local Roman Catholic priest. A statement from the Archdiocese saying, in part, they take seriously any allegation of sexual misconduct and the safety and well-being of all people are very important. Now investigators are looking into whether there are more victims. 
case that spoke with parishioners at his most recent church, St. Rosalima. We're going to have a full breakdown and a new statement from the Archdiocese coming up at 630. This morning, San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers are hoping you can help them track down the suspects in two separate murder cases. Let's start with the murder of 30 year old Alexis Trevino earlier this month over on the west side. SAPD responded to reports of a major crash at Panuco and Buena Vista Roads. Here's a video of the scene where it happened. Officers found Trevino inside a vehicle shot in the head. The only evidence investigators found were bullet holes through the back window and the headrest. And another Crime Stoppers case, the victim also found shot in a vehicle. Police are looking for the person who murdered a man on the city's west side. So this is a victim, 28-year-old Juan Mendoza. He was killed in March of last year. Now police say he was in the driver's seat of a vehicle, stopped at a red light on South General McMullen when someone in a black Chevy Malibu pulled up to his vehicle and shot him in the head. He died that next day. You are asked to call Crime Stoppers if you have any information about either case. That number is 210-224-STOP. New details from the border as El Paso City officials are describing their shelters following the surge of migrants crossing into the U.S. illegally. They don't necessarily have funds to be able to continue their travels within the United States. That's also leading to that breaking point because we're seeing longer stays within the shelter system as a direct result. The mayor of El Paso says the city has found accommodations for 7,000 migrants in just the last 10 days. And last night, the city council voted to buy a former school to serve as an additional migrant shelter. Back here in San Antonio, the city continues to shelter migrants as well. The online dashboard shows more than 1,000 migrants have been sheltered daily since Friday. And topping your morning headlines, it's almost time for lights, camera action in Hollywood. Leaders with the Writers Guild of America voted in favor of its members going back to work starting at 2.01 a.m. this morning, San Antonio time. This is after 148 days of striking on the streets. Tentative contract with the major studios includes pay hikes, stronger benefits, protections against the studio's use of artificial intelligence, and guarantees for streaming compensation. Now to the case against Amazon. Is the trillion dollar online shopping behemoth a monopoly? Well, the government says yes. And now as ABC's Andrew Dimbert reports, Amazon is fighting back. This morning, a groundbreaking lawsuit. The Federal Trade Commission and 17 states are suing Amazon, claiming the online retail giant has created a monopoly. They're claiming that Amazon punishes vendors if they offer their products for a lower price on a competing website. They also are forcing or allegedly forcing these vendors to use their logistics, their warehousing, their shipping. The suit claims Amazon deters rivals and punishes sellers from lowering prices on other sites by making them invisible in search results. The $1.3 trillion company is accused of prioritizing search results for its own products and coercing sellers to use Amazon's fulfillment service. Service. Nicholas Parks is the president of snobfoods.com and has been selling on Amazon for 21 years. We have to more than double our prices um, in order to compensate for all the fees, in order to break even, basically. It's created a, a very difficult retail market for anybody in the retail business. Amazon firing back, defending its practices and saying if the FTC gets its way, the result would be fewer products to choose from, higher prices, slower deliveries for consumers and reduced options for small businesses. The lawsuit filed by the FTC is wrong on the facts and the law. The suit had long been expected, with the head of the FTC vowing to rein in tech companies, but the legal strategy is far from a sure bet. Linda Kahn, who's bringing this suit, has a long time history of being a critic uh, of Amazon. Her anti-competitive views don't always sit well with the courts. A couple of cases she brought, namely against Microsoft and Facebook's parent company, Meta, uh, were thrown out. Don't look for any quick resolution to this lawsuit. The case could drag on in court for years. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. And the time now, 6.08 and 76 degrees for now. After the break, Custom Art on Wheels, a KSAC crew takes a ride with lowrider owners whose cars are now on display at San Antonio International Airport. And you're right around town and the afternoon may be a little warm with that sunshine, but for now we're at 76 degrees and a little humid out there. We'll be right back. It's Hispanic Heritage Month, and out at San Antonio International, they have a new display to celebrate our city's enthusiasm for cars. 
RJ Marcus and photojournalist Adam Barraza took a low ride to the airport to share the history and meaning behind these cars. From custom paint jobs to bouncing hydraulics, each one of these lowriders tells its own story. Man, a lot goes into a lowrider. A lowrider is an extension of the person. You know, most of these cars are dedicated to somebody, you know, from their fa from their family, from their past. We got the chance to ride with some of these car owners from Callahan to Culebra on their way to the airport. It's beauty, it's mesmerizing, it's, it's watching a kid seeing a lowrider for the first time going, what, wow. As they cruise down the streets, all eyes are on these custom works of art. These cars are meant to be seen. They're not meant to be kept in the garage. Joe De La Rosa owns a 59 Chevy Impala. He says that there's not much that compares to driving his lowrider. If it's once a month, maybe twice a month, um, it, it's, it's like a, a place that you've been waiting to be Low at. Lowriding is a way of life for these owners. Stacy Stewart was born into the San Antonio car culture. His dad founded one of the iconic lowrider clubs in San Antonio, First Impressions. I said he would take his cars to the next level of building it. When you have a lowrider, you get to create your own dream of a car, like you, you, your own color, your own interior all of the specialties you want to do to a car. Stacy installed thousands of dollars worth of hydraulics in this car and it definitely makes an impression. Spins, there's a gear in here with fluid. It spins and it shoots the fluid up to the front and that's what makes the car go up and down. Cruising downtown, you get tourists that, that like what they see. Um, like I said, I put it on, hit the hydraulics, hop it. It's just something different, you know? Lowriders can be traced back to the 1940s and 50s. They became popular as many Mexican-Americans or Chicanos on the West Coast, the Southwest, and Texas wanted to express more of their culture. It's a time, timeless effort, but it's definitely worth it. Um, the pride that goes into it is something that's unmatched. These cars are now on display at the airport for Hispanic Heritage Month, generations of stories and history on four wheels. My hope is that I can inspire others to be able to join what I would call the culture, the, the sport of the love of, of low riding. So like we're finally getting uh, a platform to where we can highlight the beauty of our culture. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Looking ahead, the 10th annual Cleft Strong 5K will be happening in a couple of weekends and you still have time to register for it. This event, is a great way for us to spread awareness, but also to show our kids who are cleft affected that there are other kids out there, other people out there that are just like them. This 5K will take place on October 8th at Eisenhower Park. If you can't make it out, you can also join the 5K virtually. There will also be a DJ, games, food, and a silent auction. So you can sign up by heading over to our website at KSET.com. Let's check with Stephen to see if this morning's commute's a sprint or a grinding marathon. <laughs> well, uh, we're going to have to get through a few things here because while the TransGuide cameras aren't capturing any issues, we're going to have to talk to our friends over there because it does look like we have a new crash report. We'll get to our map and show you where that's at, but as I mentioned, these TransGuide cameras aren't really showing anything too concerning, just a little bit more of that traffic. Always expected, but guys, be on the lookout here along I-35 northbound near Olympia Parkway. We do have a new crash reported, and I'm seeing that traffic is backed up to Judd so we'll talk to our friends over there at Transguide. I know that there are plenty of cameras in that area, so we'll see what we can do about showing you the conditions out there. Now, the water view of the map, uh, we're going to start to see a little bit more of that red takeover in the next 15 to 20 minutes. So just be on the lookout for any congestion that you may encounter. I can guarantee you we'll start seeing it here along US 90 just before Loop 1604 within the next few minutes. But if you plan on hitting the roads and maybe heading to the gas station, let's take a look at today's average gas price from AAA. Now, right now, they're reporting the average gas price in Bear County, $3.30. Uh, Texas is looking at $3.38 for that average gas price, and the country $3.83. And believe it or not, that's actually a dip from what we reported about a week ago. So we'll continue to watch the gas prices closely. I know I have to head to the gas station later today, so that's no fun. But hey, got to do what you got to do to hit the roads and get to your destination on time and safely. But we'll talk to our friends at TransGuide about that issue that we're seeing at 35. But thankfully, these TransGuide cameras aren't showing in too much of a problem. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you, Stephen. Yeah, you bet. good news for Wednesday morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More good news? Uh, you know, it's it's mixed news. Uh, <laughs> it's still hot. I, I think the good part about today's forecast is there is a chance for rain. So if you do get underneath the downpour today, it will cool you down briefly, very briefly. Let me show you an astounding number, guys. One eleven. 
That is the consecutive amount of days we've spent above 90 degrees. I think this is a very telling stat because we've looked at a lot of stats this summer and how very hot it's been. But this really uh, shows you that since June, since early June, we have been above 90 degrees consistently every day, which during the summer you would expect that. But as we get into September, you would hope we would fall below that mark at least once. And we had some rainy days over the summer where you think maybe, maybe we stay below 90. Nope. And the extended forecast doesn't show any relief in that sense. So we are going to set this record by a large margin. Uh, the next in line was 108 set back in 2009 and 98 set back in 2019. So we're blowing those out of the water. What a year it has been. We say that all the time, but uh, it is so very true. High temperatures today above 90, 96 here in San Antonio, 92 Fair Oaks Ranch, 94 in Bandera, 96 in San Marcos, 95 in Pearsall. And it will be fairly humid to boot. Well, we'll see those humidity levels stay fairly elevated. Uh, even into Saturday, it probably takes until early next week to see humid humidity levels come down a little bit. We were hoping this weekend we see those numbers come down, but now it's looking like it'll be just a bit more humid, especially on Saturday. Uh, here's the weather where you live right now. We've got a mostly clear skies. 77 at the airport feels like 79 thanks to that humidity. 74 in New Braunfels, 71 Seguin, 68 in Bernie and Kerrville. Some of the cool spots. That sounds nice. And what about rain? Uh, well, we don't see any through the first half of the day, but we'll fast forward to 2 o'clock, and it's about that time that we should start to see the clouds bubbling up into a few downpours here and there. A lot like yesterday, although it's hard to uh, tell exactly where that will happen. So don't pay too close attention to the specific location here. Just know that the idea is that really anywhere across our viewing area, we could see a uh, downpour pop up, especially between 2 and 8 p.m., but the late afternoon, uh, evening hours is kind of that, that favorite time frame where uh, we could see some of this. And then by 8, 9 o'clock, a lot of it's probably dying down, although this model does show a few showers hanging on even through 10 o'clock. So our forecast today, uh, by 10 a.m., we're in the low 80s. By noontime, we're closing in on 90. It's partly cloudy, and there are those rain chances. We top out around 96, as we said. Probably feels a little bit warmer than that, too, when you factor in the humidity. As we look at rainfall through Monday, yeah, we have a chance today but really, it's uh, it's not going to amount to much. Most of the bulk, the, the, the heavy rain is going to be off to our west and across Pacific Northwest. Just the way the pattern is setting up after today, it's not looking too good for rain. And you look at the departure from normal rainfall, how far we are below average. Uh, not good. We're closing in on 10 inches here below average in most of the state. Now, all the state is a below average at this point. And drought continues to set in. I mean, we're not alone here. Uh, Dallas Fort Worth is over 11 inches below average. So our forecast, 95 Thursday, 95 Friday, very consistent here. A few more clouds over the weekend, low to mid 90s. That'll be the case also next week. Uh, so hopefully we get a little bit of rain today. We'll see how it pans out. I hope so for some people. Somebody is going to win the rain lottery today. <laughs> I hope it's you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. 620, 76 degrees. And just ahead, the family of an LA County Sheriff's deputy who was killed in his patrol car, is breaking their silence and speaking exclusively to ABC News. That preview is next in your GMA First Look. This right here is confidence in a bottle. It makes me feel so much more confident than I've ever felt. They are some of the hottest videos on social media. Those videos claiming to instantly get rid of bags under your eyes. Annette Figueroa is here to tell us why she says this one is for real. This one is for real, and I'm so excited. We even have a video, and all he uses is a small amount on a clean, dry face. And what it does is it tightens and lifts the appearance of bags underneath your eyes. And I did this to my father. We were at home, so we applied it to his under eye bags. And let me tell you, we were so excited. In under 10 minutes, they visibly disappeared from view. And now it is literally part of both of our daily routines. And not only does it work on the bags, it works on the appearance of crow's feet, fine lines, and wrinkles. At our $14.95 price, it's the best way to try Plexiderm and see it work after your first application. Your solution is at PlexidermTrial.com or call the number on your screen. Streaming now. Um, we're about five to six hundred bucks a month on, on water usage. Their water bill more than doubled from one month to the next after a pipe sprung a leak. We, we had a break. Uh, the ground movement happens all over San Antonio. A few weeks later, we get a bill in the mail for a million gallons of water, fifteen thousand five hundred eighty dollars. That's just ridiculous. They've been bullying us, intimidating us. Now, Saw says it's time to pay up or have the water shut off. 
KSAT investigates the water company's policies on outrageously high bills. Streaming now on these platforms. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive. What is justice to you? That's been a tough question. It's been just 11 days since L.A. County Sheriff's Deputy Ryan Klinkenbrumer was killed. Investigators say this surveillance video shows the assailant's dark gray car approaching Klinkenbrumer's SUV, then pulling alongside where they say he fatally shot the 30-year-old and then sped away. And now this morning, his mother and fiance are speaking out to Good Morning America. I remember that day too, like he kissed me goodbye, told me he loved me. I was like, well, I'll see you later. And just never came home. And we'll have much more of our exclusive interview coming up at 7 a.m. and how they want the world to remember the man they said was so proud to wear his badge. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kana Whitworth, ABC News, Los Angeles. In your morning consumer headlines, the proposed return of net neutrality rules. The FCC is aiming to restore Obama-era regulations for high-speed Internet for providers like AT&T, Comcast, and Verizon. The rules would ban the companies from blocking or slowing down access to online content. The Internet providers are expected to fight the effort. Apple has released a new operating system for Mac computers. It includes new interactive desktop widgets and screensavers along with video conferencing improvements and even a game mode. It can be downloaded for most Mac models after 2017. And Spotify has introduced a social listening feature. Spotify Jam allows groups to organize and, uh, or, and listen to shared playlists. The feature works with as many as 32 users. That's probably more convenient than making a, a tape. <laughs> old school. Old school playlist, <laughs> recording Still tape that, to tape. That tape I loaned you back in uh, oh. 91 is, yes. I need that back. It's in my, my car. Thank you. <laughs> Stuck in your car. Stuck in the car forever. <laughs> 626, 75 degrees. And still ahead at 630. Goodwill and other companies around town are hosting a mega job fair that starts this morning, where you can apply and what they're looking for coming up. And we're shining a spotlight on one local organization pairing service dogs with those who need them most. And a quick check of the roads with Trans Guide. Ouch! Looking out there at I-35 at Judson looks a little bit like a slow moving parking lot, but we're going to check in with Stephen Cavazos to see what's going on very soon. This morning on GMSA, the city of San Antonio keeps growing, and so does the problem of illegal dumping, how a neighborhood is dealing with trash problems and what officials are doing to help clean up the mess. Plus, he saw an opportunity, and like a predator will tend to do, he took full advantage of that. Investigators are looking into whether there are more victims in the case against a local Roman Catholic priest after his arrest. Down to about 75 degrees out there as so we take a live look at Move 410 and San Antonio International Airport. Full forecast is coming up. Hi, good morning. We made it to Wednesday. It is September 27th. Glad you're joining us for our 630 half hour. Top stories are coming up. But first, Justin is in for Mike, and there is a small, small chance of rain in the forecast. Yes, my slid it does. Showers and storms later today. It is small victories, right? Because when I came in from, for work this morning, it was 80. So we're down to 75. It's a little improvement. So it feels a little bit better out there. And yes, we do have that chance of rain a little bit later today, which is going to be uh, nice if if you're one of the lucky few that gets the rain right now 77 outside uh, 79 is the heat index 71 in Seguin uh, 68 Bernie and Kerrville so there are some places this morning that are down in the 60s not many but a few and as we look at the pollen count this was yesterday's number we'll get the new one in here in about an hour or so molds are still high 1040 ragweed foam and pigweed all there. Uh, these have been pretty consistent this week. And uh, we'll see where we land today. Molds should come down a little bit. Your case had 12 hour forecast, 10 o'clock, 83, noon time, you're at 89, partly cloudy. And then we start to add in those rain chances. I think between 2 and 8 o'clock is our window if we're going to see any downpours, in which uh, we'll start to see stuff popping up, probably peaking right around the late afternoon and dinner time hours. 96. Still hot today. It'll probably feel more like 97, 98 when you factor in that humidity. 
How was the morning commute looking? Let's hope there's not a lot of headaches there. Let's check in with Stephen for the latest. I, I wish I could say that, Justin. Unfortunately, this situation is definitely going to be tricky for drivers as we take that shot in from Trans Guide. We do have more paramedics, our first responders, I should say, arriving to the scene. This is a crash that I mentioned earlier, and this isn't even where it's listed. I did talk to our friends at Trans Guide. That crash looks like it's a little bit further up I-35 near Olympia Parkway, but you could see that backup is stretched out to Judson, probably even further. And right now, the difficult thing is that these first responders are trying to get to that scene, but there's so much traffic that they're going to have to navigate through. And as I take a closer look at that, it does appear that that does appear, uh, look like a paramedic. So be on the lookout if you have to travel along I-35. This is heading northbound toward Live Oak, so not looking good at this time. And again, we do have an ambulance on the scene. We have the buildup that, that's taking place also in the southbound lanes, but remember, we have it listed at Olympia Parkway, and we're going to see that backup along the northbound lanes stretch a little bit further now that we've entered morning rush. As we give you a wider view of the map. This is what's also expected. The slowdowns and I said US 90. That's going to be the first spot that we're going to start to see that build up. So be on the lookout if you have to travel in the next few minutes. It does look like we have a busy start to morning rush. I'm going to watch things closely and keep my fingers crossed. We'll have a better update to report in the next few minutes. Mark. Stephen, thank you to our top story. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says he believes a local Catholic priest accused of sexual assault most likely has struck before. He along with the local archdiocese are calling for other victims to come forward. The priest who has been arrested and charged most recently served at St. Rose of Lima Catholic Church on the west side. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Katrina, we understand this case has to do with a woman who attends that church. Now that's what the sheriff told us, that a 70-year-old parishioner here at St. Rose of Lima recently made this outcry after another allegation against this priest came to light. Now, in a news conference yesterday, the sheriff, Salazar, laid out the case against the priest, Father George Mbugua Ndungu. He says the 42-year-old took advantage of a 70-year-old woman who relied on him for spiritual guidance. That woman told authorities that the priest, who's more commonly known as Father Juan Jury, sexually assaulted her three times since November of, of last year. Salazar says the woman spoke out after an employee also made a complaint to his office about the priest. He says the archdiocese reassigned him after the, the allegations came to light. Still, news of his arrest came as a surprise to at least one man who attends church here at St. Rose of Lima. We're all humans. We all make mistakes, you know, so sooner or later, whoever does bad, you know, they're going to they're going to pay for it. There's heaven and there's hell. Salazar says the priest, Father Wanjuri, had been assigned to eight different churches in our area since 2017. And for that reason, he believes there could be other victims. Both he and the archdiocese have made separate appeals for any potential victims to come forward. Now, the archdiocese did that by way of a written statement yesterday. In that same statement, they also said that they take all allegations like this seriously. You can read the entire statement on our website and the story on our website, ksat.com. Reporting on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Katrina. Close to 300 workers in Bear County will soon be without a job. That's according to the Texas Workforce Commission. Now, the report from TWC shows more than half of the 279 layoffs are at the food service vendor Airmark. 144 Airmark employees are being laid off at two Christus Health locations, largely because the contract between Christus and Airmark expired. Now, in a statement from Christus Health, the employees will be allowed to work for their new food vendor. The contract between Christus and Aramark is set to expire on October 31st. You can read that full statement from Christus Health right now on our website at KSET.com. City of San Antonio is stepping up efforts to stop illegal dumping and clearing out illegal dumping and homeless encampments is a big priority for the solid waste management crews. The city spends over one and a half million dollars to fund an 11 member crew dedicated solely to clearing dump sites and encampments. Last year, they collected more than 2,400 tons of trash from 9,000 cleanups. The goal this year, 11,000 cleanups, 3,000 tons of trash. This summer, an undercover operation with San Antonio police led to the arrest of three people suspected of illegal dumping. We're going to be doing a lot more of these this year, so if you're dumping, you get caught, you're going to have a bad day. 
Illegal dumping could cost you a fine of a few thousand dollars or jail time. Solid Waste Department getting an extra $530,000 this year to deal with the issue. You're also going to be seeing more educational advertising telling the community where they can drop off their bulky trash for free. Well, now to a big win for San Antonio and the city's bioscience and health industries. Texas has been awarded the headquarter location for a federal scientific research agency. The Advanced Research Projects Agency for Health, or ARPA-H, is a group that has its sights set on medical innovation, specifically how patients across the country will be treated in the future. The headquarters will be physically located in Dallas, but San Antonio will also have a role Case had asked Biomed SA President Heather Hansen why the announcement is big for the Alamo City. In San Antonio in particular, having this visibility will likely mean more projects coming here, more clinical trials coming here, to where our population will get access first to these cutting edge technologies. Now Heather Hansen went on to say the announcement means jobs and money are coming to San Antonio. You can watch that entire interview with her at the UT Health SA Vice President of Research on KSET.com. Happening today, Goodwill San Antonio hosting a mega career fair with over 45 employers looking to hire over 1,500 positions. The event starts this morning at 10 and runs through 1 p.m. over on East Commerce near the Frost Bank Center. Officials say most positions start at $15 an hour. Employers at the fair include Goodwill San Antonio, Amazon, the City of San Antonio, Marriott International, and Zachary Construction. Right now on Kesa.com, Canyon Lake has a lot of secrets, and the low water levels have led to the discovery of one of them. A cave known as Party Cove is usually hidden beneath the water's surface. However, now it is exposed. Previously, divers had found proof that two towns are at the bottom of the lake. Read more about it right now on our website at KSEF.com. And before we go to break, we're almost to October. That means there's plenty of things to do for fall and spooky season. That includes haunted houses, pumpkin patches, and don't forget the barbacoa and big red festival. You can find a list of fall time favorites right now on KSEF.com. I have the pumpkins out in my porch right now. Do you? Yeah, I'm trying to will fall to happen. <laughs> Good for you. I'm proud of you. Slowly, but we, surely. We need all the help we can get. Yes, we do. Time now, 639 and 75 degrees for now. Just ahead, how one local organization is pairing service dogs with those who need them the most. Welcome back. As we wrap up September, we're bringing awareness to dogs who serve their owners. Tiffany Huertas introduces us to Flirt and her owner and explains why service dogs are important for people struggling with a disability. Weave. Good girl. Weave. This is Flirt, Weave. an eight-year-old Belgian Malinois who helps her owner Whitley with her anxiety and PTSD. September marks National Service Dog Month and these animals are a necessity for those who struggle with physical and mental disabilities. The service dogs end up being a way for the person to integrate back into society. Whitley Cheatham is the owner and training director of Dog Training Elite. Her business helps train service dogs to help their owners with any disability they may have. A normal training session includes obedience training, how to behave in public, and how to help their owner deal with their specific needs. Service dogs can help those who are in a wheelchair, have diabetes, PTSD, heart issues, and so much more. By having her sit like this when I'm facing a shelf or in line, it helps give the people a perception to slow down because the dog's staring at them, but it also gives me that feeling that Somebody's watching my back. Okay. Cheatham says it's very important to remember if you see a service dog in public, do not go up to it. That could put their human in danger. One of the best things when you see a service dog is to ignore it. If you want to engage with the service dog, ask the handler first. You can learn more about service dogs and dog training elite by heading to our website, KSAT.com. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. And coming up tomorrow on GMSA, we'll hear from Whitley Cheatham again as she explains what her company did to help the survivors and first responders from the Robb Elementary school shooting. 
And it's still a mess out there at I-35 at Judson. Let's take back with Stephen Cavazos. I don't think this is going to clear anytime soon, at least while the show is still going on. We're going to have to keep an eye on this. This is 35 northbound at Judson, and you can see that we have traffic that is pretty much stuck in that area as we're trying to navigate through that crash. Flashing lights out in the distance, and earlier we showed you that paramedics were arriving at the scene, but we're having a tough time navigating through all that mess out there. Steph, you described this perfectly. It's a slow-moving parking lot, and 35 is one of those spots where we have construction that's taking place so any incident that pops up will lead to bigger slowdowns and again uh, we do have paramedics on the scene so we hope everyone's okay out there but traffic's not looking great the northbound lanes at judson is where it's been pinpointed earlier we told you it was near olympia parkway but now texas has updated the information to show that two lanes are blocked in that area and now that slowdown is reflected on our map so just not a good area to drive through we're going to get a push alert sent out momentarily but as we give you a wider look at the map we can expect more of that color to take over again uh, usual spots us 90 and you see it there also in leon valley around 410 and State Highway 151 if you're heading eastbound. So slowdowns will be the big problem at least right now and this crash along 35 northbound is something that I'm going to keep a close eye on throughout the rest of the show. But uh, yeah, I think that's a great way to describe it. It is a slow moving parking lot and it's happening during a really busy time. So let's hope everyone is patient out there. Good luck out yeah. there, folks. Yep. Thank you, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. And I might add, be nice. Let people in. Yeah. And don't yeah. cut. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and use your blinker. Uh, and use your blinker. <laughs> yeah, David Sears would say that too. Yes, he, yes, would. he would. He yes. wouldn't just say it. He, he demand it. Uh, yeah, it would yeah. be an exclamation. Yes. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> Underlined. Yeah. Well, we're all we're the, everyone's trying to get to work yeah. at the same time. So be nice. Yeah. Uh, 77 degrees out there right now. If you're uh, headed out the door right now, uh, mostly clear. West northwesterly winds at about three. Dew point is at 70, so it still feels pretty sticky out there. And as we look at water vapor, I mentioned this earlier, but this is always a great way to kind of see what's headed our way in the atmosphere, where you see this kind of white and purpley color. That's where there is a bit more moisture in upper parts of the atmosphere. And that's kind of what we need to get showers and storms going. So as this moves in a little bit later today, there's a little disturbance that'll roll through. I think that should give lift to uh, some activity on the radar this afternoon. And we could certainly use it. We didn't get a lot yesterday. There was some, but not enough. Uh, not much out there in the way of rain right now. A few showers right along the border, uh, but nothing that uh, is moving through San Antonio. So as we look at the forecast, it's right through noontime. We'll fast forward, though, to 2 o'clock, and that's about the time we'll start to see some of these showers bubbling up. Uh, it'll be hit or miss type stuff. I mean, this looks pretty widespread, right? But I think this model tends to overdo it a little bit. So it gets the general idea across that it, we'll see two, three, four, five of these pop-ups, and hopefully uh, you will be one of those folks that are underneath these uh, downpours. If you do get underneath one, you'll get some decent rain out of it and perhaps some gusty winds too. Just the way the atmosphere is setting up, there could be some gustier winds with the stronger storms. We're not looking for severe weather though. And then by 9, 10 o'clock, a lot of this is starting to die down uh, and we'll see them uh, see the, the showers and storms go away. Rain chances today again, two and eight, two, between 2 and 8 o'clock is that window that we'll be watching. It's only a 20% chance of rain. It's not great. Uh, as we look at the big picture here, and that little disturbance rolls through. Jet stream's still pretty far to the north, but we start to see it buckle some out west uh, by late in the week. And that's an area of low pressure that digs south, still well to the north and west of us. And it kind of gets stuck out there as high pressure builds in over us. And that means quiet weather, unfortunately, uh, as we head through the weekend. It also means some pretty warm weather, too. Uh, very quickly, let's go out to the tropics. There's not a lot to look at here. We still got a couple of systems out in the Atlantic, Philippe, and what probably will be Rena. It's not named yet. Still kind of a disorganized mess, but the Hurricane Center thinks there's a pretty decent chance that it will develop. These two are close together. That usually doesn't bode well for these systems. Uh, in fact, Philippe is uh, forecast to weaken into a tropical depression as it head towards the islands. And then we put the spaghetti plots on this wave here, and this one kind of drifts north and west, probably doesn't do a lot either. So not much to worry about there in the Atlantic. We'll still keep an eye on it. Certainly nothing that's going to impact Texas. Uh, we didn't get a lot from the tropics this year, uh, other than Harold that of course moved through and brought us some rain so that uh, we're kind of moving towards uh, the tail end of tropical season. We still got a couple months left, but uh, looks like things will stay fairly quiet for now. 95 Thursday, 95 Friday, 94 on Saturday, 94 Sunday and some low to mid 90s next week. We're still above 90 all the way through. We showed you that number last half hour, 111 days consecutive that we've been at 90 or above. We keep that going right on into next week. All kinds of breaking records here. Uh, there have been so many records broken this 
summer and this year that I, we've lost count. Yeah. There's a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank Some, you, Justin. Something to tell our grandkids. Remember back in the summer of 23? <laughs> Very true. Yeah. 649, 76 degrees. Well, in case you missed it earlier, our coverage on service dogs will continue tomorrow on GMSA. How dogs from San Antonio were able to help survivors and first responders from Robb Elementary in Uvalde. Outside with Live Cam, just like an airline, we know you have a choice when you fly in the mornings, and we thank you for choosing GMSA Air. <laughs> Streaming now. This is inhumane. This is unacceptable. It's over 100 degrees outside, but inside the walls of Texas prisons, it's even hotter. There are people dying in their 30s. During the hottest part of the day, I feel dizzy, see stars, and feel like I'm going to vomit. Do you know that the dog pounds even have air conditioner? But the state of Texas prisons don't. That's pretty sick. Watch the full story now on these streaming platforms. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we're following the new legal setback for Donald Trump after a New York judge ruled that the former president committed years of financial fraud. We'll have the reaction and an ABC News exclusive with the mother and the fiance of the Los Angeles Sheriff's deputy who was killed in an ambush. We'll have that and so much more right here on GMA. United Way of Bear County still teaming up to cool people down with free box fans. Project Cool has provided seniors and people with disabilities fans for months now, but there's not much time left if you still need one. You have until September 30th to get that free fan. That's this Saturday. Just call United Way Helpline at 211 to schedule a delivery directly to your house. And right now on KSET.com, can you believe the month of September is almost over. Well, we hope the weather is as well, but that means it's going to start looking a lot like fall, especially at the San Antonio Pumpkin Festival. It's a celebration that will run Thursdays through Sundays, and this will be from September 28th to October 29th on Broadway, not far from the Pearl. So the party will have train rides, a corn maze, and of course, pumpkin carving. You can read more about this on our website at KSA.com. Just look for this article. Hey, a viewer just reminded me today is National Morning Show Host Day. Aww. Yeah, so happy yeah. you day, Stephen Cavazos. <laughs> Well, I wish it was a happy day for drivers out here Aww. along 35, guys. Uh, as expected, we still have this issue reported by TxDOT. Now, we do know that drivers are going to have a hard time getting through this. Just pack some patience. If you have to travel to work, I would say maybe look for a different route. We do have a pretty serious crash that slowed folks down in that area. Of course, first responders are out there on the scene, but we know a few lanes are blocked at this hour. This does seem to be the main issue out on the roadways, and it doesn't appear that it's going to go anywhere anytime soon. But as always, Justin, we're going to watch things closely throughout Good Morning America. America and have those updates for viewers throughout the morning. Sounds good, Stephen. Thank you. 96 degrees today. There is a chance for some showers and storms uh, between 2 and 8 o'clock today. Know that most of us will not get rain, but uh, maybe you do see one of these downpours. Uh, 95 Thursday, 95 Friday, uh, basically mid 90s going into next week. It's pretty quiet forecast beyond today. Unfortunately, uh, the weekend looks okay. I mean, the mornings will be okay, but the afternoon still plenty hot. Let's just wake up early and enjoy the mornings. Mm -hmm. in the weekend. I, I know I think I'm going to sleep in this weekend. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. That's good, too. I like waking <laughs> up early. Cup of coffee outside. It's yeah. a nice way to start the day, right? Yeah. Okay. Get a jump start on things. But again, happy morning show host day to everybody oh, yes. that works this shift. It, it's tough, but you guys make it easy. Bye, guys.